Hello, my name is Sophia Stobel. I'm Head of Development at Tyne and Weir Archives and Museums. I have a few other hats, including being an advisory board member for Durham University's Castle College and Hilton Castle Sunderland. I also am the Regional Ambassador for the Institute of Fundraising's Cultural Network and a trustee of November Club based in Walworth, Northumberland. So a few hats and a few different remits, but a, a great uh, snapshot of some of the best uh, that of Northeast art, culture and heritage can offer. And today on day one of Newcastle Startup Week 2020, great to see that it's gone online and virtual. Um, we have the theme inspiration and inspiration really is everything that art, culture and heritage um, is and it's never been more important than today in terms of today marks week nine for me of lockdown um, and it's it's a great way to access be inspired by try and keep our minds active but also offer a little bit of escapism as well through our collections and through our stories so I thought today what I would do would just give give you a snapshot of I think I just got an email of what been up to in terms of Tyne and Archives and Museums what our venues have been doing some of the conversations that we've been having in light of COVID-19, some of the challenges that we face, not, not just ourselves, but the wider sector, um, but also what you can access from home, what can you can maybe take inspiration from or, or, or challenge yourself with, with finding out something new. And there are some resources that um, Newcastle Startup Week will be sharing. There should be something in the chat as well, which gives you not only art, um, museums and gallery resources, but also fitness, meditation, reading, learning, uh, and everything in between. So I thought I'd just kick start with um, my presentation. So I'll just share my screen and we'll go from there. So just a bit more about Tyne and Wear Archives and Museums before we, we kick start. So we're quite a complicated organization. Uh, we're 22 miles of innovation, art, history, and science into four museums, three galleries, two Roman forts, and the archive. Um, we are bigger than what we seem as well. We also provide some, some key services to the, the, uh, the wider culture sector in the region as well. But if I just break that down for you. So we, we, we uh, manage our Bayer Roman Fort in South Tyneside from where um, the emperor um, directed the building of Hadrian's Wall on North Tyneside all the way across from Walls End to, to Carlisle. We're the Discovery Museum based in uh, Newcastle city centre next to the, the central um, station, Great North Museum Hancock near the Civic Centre, Hatton Art Gallery, the Lang Art Gallery, both in Newcastle, Segedin and Roman Fort, North Tyneside, Shipley Art Gallery, Gateshead, South Shields Museum and Art Gallery, very, very close to the metro station on the high street, and Stevenson Steel, Steam Railway next to Cobalt Business Park, and of course the archives, Tyne Wheel Archives, and we look after the archives for Sunderland, North and South Tyneside, Newcastle, Gateshead, and its home is uh, inside the Discovery Museum in Newcastle. On top of our venues, we also uh, manage a number of services on behalf of the Arts Council England, including Culture Bridge, uh, bridging that gap between the arts and education and learning resources, supporting schools and teachers, um, utilising those resources. We also uh, support Museum Development Northeast, uh, which offers crucial skills, but also support and advice to museums across the region around accreditation um, and anything in between as well. Most recently, um, we've also started a Northeast Development Forum, which is a network of more than 100 fundraisers um, across specifically art, culture and heritage organisations. Um, sometimes it's only one or two people who are responsible for, in for generating income, uh, donations, but also business uh, relationships, partnerships, sponsorships and things like that. So it's a way to build, build networks, build partnerships, share best practice, but also convene four times a year and bring training, insight and interesting speakers to the Northeast uh, rather than having to travel and the world of travel again has changed. Everything has gone online. So um, we also, since 2007, Tyne World Archives and Museums facilitate the Late Shows, which is the UK's largest culture crawl um, by night. And this weekend would have been um, this year's festival, Friday the 15th and Saturday the 16th of May. Um, and this year marks the first year in partnership with Newcastle Startup Week, as well as our long-standing partner, the Biscuit Factory. So we are one of the largest museum groups in the UK. And so that's just a bit of a snapshot of what we do. Fundamentally, we're the people we welcome, the places we come from, the stories we share and the collections we care for. 
and um, all of which we've had to review and reflect on how we do this, why we do it, what methods do we use, what tools, what platforms in light of COVID-19 and, uh, and reassess um, what our audiences will, will be needing in the coming months um, as our world changes. So just a bit more information about, about sort of you know, those four statements. The people we welcome, um, it's, it's always been about, about the people. And in terms of across the nine venues and the archives, we welcome on average around 1.3 million people. Now we've gone on, online, we've gone virtual, our audiences are global. And we have see, been seeing that quite, quite clearly um, in the engagement of our social media sites as well, some of which have, have just skyrocketed. One in particular is over 400% um, normal engagement in comparison to, uh, to non-COVID months. The places we come from, we are firmly rooted in the Northeast with internationally significant collections, um, but also we, we estimated um, that Tynaway Archives Museums in particular brings in around about 10.5 million pounds um, in terms of economic contribution to the region as well. Stories we share, again, stories are lie right at the heart of what we do um, in terms of engaging with, with um, the collections, but also the people on our doorstep. So one of the best things that I personally think that we do is the Boxes of Delight, which is an educational resource that we send out to schools. Um, last year, we had 342 boxes that went out to schools across the region, which reached just under 20,000 children. A great way to pick up pieces of history, but also, you know, have something tangible in front of you to, to learn about. So again, one of the conversations is how do we take our, you know, our day-to-day -day activities and our resources and adapt them to, uh, to today's climate and a more virtual way of engaging and consuming culture. And Last but definitely not least, we are the collections we care for. So I mentioned we welcome close to 1.3 million people a year. We care for 1.1 um, million items uh, across our collections. Um, and uh, they're also about caring for and making sure that they're, we have a duty of care. So for example, last financial year, we saved 500 sound recordings. So there's, there's a lot of interesting um, talk about voice technology, audio, you know, sort of Alexa technology, but actually some of the technology um, is, is quickly going out of date. So again, one of the conversations we've been having is how do we um, make sure that we're, we're communicating in the right way, on the right, on the right platforms, and they're keeping the technology up to date and refreshed as well. So culture and COVID, as of the 18th of March, our doors closed, as did many of our colleagues across the region, across the country. And we now find ourselves in culture quarantine. But actually, it does offer a, a number of new opportunities, new ways to engage with our audiences, um, but has, does definitely have some significant challenges for, for us in particular, but also for um, charities, arts, culture and heritage organisations across, across the globe. However, partnerships are, have been key and the power of partnerships have never been um, better better, better uh, displayed than during COVID-19. Some of the UK networks that Tynaway Archives Museums um, have been utilising include the National Museum Directors Council, of which we're a member. We also have a very good relationship with the Department of Culture, Media and Sports. So a lot of that's been um, my director, Ian Watson, um, liaising and lobbying with DCMS as well as the NMDC to, uh, to make sure that the conversations that we're having are, are the right ones at the right time with the right people. Um, things have been moving very quickly, but, um, but again, it's also trying to connect the different conversations um, that have been happening and taking place across the, across the region, across the UK, and across the different sectors. So we were able to um, bring in the University Museum Group and the museum trading companies into that conversation with DCMS, which is great, um, to make sure that those, all those conversations are tied up. We've also been working very closely with Culture Enterprises, whose head office is Bishop Auckland, County Durham. Um, but also part of the English Civic Museums Network and also an advisory panel member of Art UK. So again, having, having the finger on the pulse and being, being connected has, has never been more vital. There's another email, apologies. Um, but really that's, that's the power of, of Tyner World Archives Museums. We play a crucial role in not only facilitating festivals and events and services, but actually facilitating conversations down in London, but across, across Europe as well, and making sure that the information that is important is funneled right back to the right people, but again, the right time to make the right decisions that's, that's, that's right for this sector at this time. 
And again, Northeast Networks, we're extremely well connected and very fortunate to have some great partnerships uh, up here, including, I mentioned before, the Museum Development uh, Northeast um, have taken on more responsibility in terms of coordinating grants, coordinating responses between the Arts Council and smaller charities who either furloughed their staff or maybe don't have the capacity to um, review some of their business models, apply for some of those uh, emergency and crisis funding. We also have Culture Bridge who have been um, collating a compendium for schools and resources, making sure there's one place where teachers and schools, but also for homeschooling and home learning and the families can access to, um, to have that creative, um, that creative resource um, but, uh, at home as well as the classroom. We've also been working with the Creative Case North, uh, North Consortium, Newcastle Gateshead Culture Venues. There's 10 venues across Newcastle Gateshead, including our partners, Baltic, Stage, Gateshead, um, Life, Live Theatre, Northern Stage, um, and others who, again, collectively have all been um, communicating on a regular basis around the impact that COVID-19 is uh, having on us and will continue to, to have. We also chair the Family Explorers Programme, Again, supporting through the Northeast Development Forum uh, fundraisers and organizations across the Northeast who, at this time, it is gonna be a, signif a significantly challenging time for, for charities, for income generation. And looking at some of the research that's available to us across um, from Europe, the Netherlands, America, New Zealand, some of the places who've already started to reopen, we can see the real significant impact that's gonna be having on income generation. So for example, Netherlands, um, there's been some, some speculation that really between 60 to 80 percent of, of generated income is going to be lost. So it's really important to support the wider uh, fundraising and income generating professionals in this region through that network. We also support Hadrian's Wall Management Plan Board, Northeast Culture Partnership. We sit on, we sit on a number of boards there. And um, Newcastle Gateshead Initiative has been brilliant um, with coordinating a series of panels where we've been feeding on a weekly basis just getting the tone and the and the um the feeling for where where conversations are going but also collating information sharing information it's been really really uh, useful and, and invaluable in terms of keeping the conversations um as up to date as possible in terms of our needs but also the wider the wider community business community as well in terms of planning for recovery planning for reopening as well so there's some of the partnerships that we've been talking about and um but also you know what does what does the art sector look like after covid during covid there's been some unexpected impacts for example there's been some thefts uh, van gogh museum saw a, a very significant piece of work uh, stolen from them in in, uh, in in the beginning of the lockdown but also some of the conversations that we're having with our colleagues is how do we plan going forward what do we need to change what do we need to adapt how are people going to change? How, how do people want to consume culture going forward? How do our visitors want to experience our, our, our museums, art galleries um, going forward? What are their concerns? And there's a nice quote from Albert Einstein, uh, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. So it's, it's keeping ourselves um, inspired, great to go back to the theme inspired but also motivated engaged and just making sure that those conversations are happening constantly and making us um really plan thoroughly for what what's coming next again just thinking about in terms of what's what's on the other side so some of the conversations is you know how can we how can we change how can we adapt what do we need to adapt so how do we tell the same how do we tell our stories in a different world through different mediums to, in different ways to engage with not only our, our local community in the northeast but now a global audience in terms of you know our collections are now available for everybody to enjoy um, and will be going forward this is a great quote from other worlds which is an exhibition that launched just before lockdown um, in partnership with atom hawk uh, northeast based um, company with the great north museum hancock uh, and art is the only way to run away without leaving home. And one of the things that we're really keen to do is offer that inspiration, offer that imagination, that sort of that spark, that creative challenge um, and support um, everybody that's at home, families, young people, our visitors, our audiences, and, um, and just try to sh take our stories online and, uh, and make them as accessible as possible. So some of these are some of the things that we've been doing, keeping our, our, uh, 
our uh, small people and family audiences, which is really the large part of our Tiny Wet Arcus Museum's audiences, happy and engaged, hopefully offering some alternative amusement and, uh, and uh, activity away from Netflix. Um, and maybe some distraction away from the temptations in the cupboards as well. This, I like this picture from, from the archives. So here's just a few, a few things that we've been doing. And uh, there is a document in the chat that uh, gives a bit more of a comprehensive list. But this should give you just a brief overview of some of the things that we've been uh, sharing and some of the most popular things as well. We've seen a huge increase in our online engagement. Some you know, double, treble, quadrupling um, the engagement levels for you know, a couple of months before COVID-19. We've had playlists as well as part of the late shows. There's some great podcasts out there, virtual tours, but also a great way to actually just delve in and get, get comfortable and, and sort of get to know um, our collections a bit better as well. Museums and art galleries have always coll collected and we continue to collect and we've been asking for people's rainbows, the creative response for COVID-19. We've had some really, really nice submissions as well. This is from Amrit in the South Tyneside. It's a rainbow that are uh, beautifully done, but also it's a great way to, um, you know, for future generations to realise what the impact of COVID was, what, you know, what was our response. And if you are interested, we do have mailing lists um, that we try and keep our, our visitors and our audiences up to date with, with those resources going straight into your inbox as well. So just a few nice examples. And um, the BBC had a nice um, article, I think last week, where they had a number of pictures um, in there from, from what was submitted. Going back to uh, Atom Hawk, we also have put a few challenges out and a few competitions to again, keep that creative, um, so creativity um, going during lockdown. And this was to take some of the inspiration from Atom Hawk's artists who offered um, the winners, the winning design. We asked children to create a monster or, 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 or a beast or a hero or a, or a sort of a, a, um, a mythical creature. And the winners would then get that creature um, or persona then recreated by one of the Atom Hawk artists. Um, in animation. So this is Jack's Curious Troll by Axel. Um, a, great, a great drawing and, uh, and really, really amazing to see the skill of the Atom Hawk artists as well. This one is a favourite as well, Hope by Luke. And Mat Matias, the artist, then created it into robo form. I think it's a nice image of uh, hovering, in, hovering in space. This one is, is quite eerie. It's ama amazing to see the imagination that's out there. Jessica's design reimagined by Josh. And uh, I like the embellishment of the, uh, the shoulder pads as well. It's a great, great design. This was the age category six to 12 by Ellie. Her underwater creature reinterpreted by Martin. Um, has a bit of Fantasia slash sort of mermaid Disney. Great, great design. But um. You know, those, four, those four drawings, for example, just tells you how, how inspiration can come from anywhere, but also it's a great way to motivate and you know, challenge, challenge yourself to pick up a pen and, uh, and you know, doodle yourself. Another competition came from Discovery Museum. This one was um, an egg captain of Tabinia made by one of my colleagues at Discovery Museum. And the call out was to get crafty, get creative. And this was one of the submissions, a great piece. Um, crafted you can see boris on tv there and the rainbow in the window and uh, the superstar key worker nhs staff as well so you know art takes many forms it's craft it's painting it's poetry it's literature it's so many different things in between so covid19 is a great opportunity actually to to take up a challenge of and finding some inspiration in, in the day-to-day -day, whether it's just grace and perry on tv or it's to our collections you know start small go big anything anything to uh, to get those cre creative uh, juices flowing we also have done a number of things with the Lang art gallery translating some of our paintings into coloring in um drawings this one for example was done by sheila graber in the um, south tyne side and uh easy to download print if you have a printer at home and uh almost almost uh actually to feel, I, I like doing this one I like a good geranium as well. So, the archives as well have been uh, keeping everybody inundated with pictures from our collections. And again, just going back to 
the resources, feel free to follow us on Twitter. A lot of our resources, our news, our pictures get shared across social media. And obviously now with uh, going virtual, that's one of the best ways to really engage with our audiences. So this is a great little picture, just poking fun at some of the things that we might be, uh, be playing around with at home in terms of working from home, finding different ways to, to operate and uh, finding a new normal um, during culture, culture quarantine. But also there's a few tips to, to share as well. You know, routine, challenge yourself, do, try and do a doodle a day or do some sort of creative, um, creative experience, whether it's crafting, taking a doodle, listening to a podcast. There's a lot of, there's a lot of resources out there um, for, any, for every level of, uh, of interest and every type of interest as well. And being relevant, um, on, the, on the 12th of May, it was the 200th anniversary of Florence Nightingale's birth. Uh, it was also International Nurses Day um, and the Year of the Nurse. So we shared some great pictures from our collections of um, regional nurses. The RBI is obviously our next door neighbour to the Great North Museum Hancock as well. And we have, through my colleagues, through staff, also been trying to think of other ways that we could support our community and our audiences, not just by sharing our resources, but also um, lending a hand and hopefully taking some of that pressure off um, the local the local services as well so this is westgate roads food bank um and some of our staff having a good time uh social distancing and hopefully continue to do that during uh, during the need um that's present i mentioned earlier that this weekend would have been the late shows and a great way to kickstart a newcastle startup week so we look forward to planning 2021 but just a special thank you to to Paul and Newcastle Startup Week for uh, partnering with the Late Shows this year. Um, the, the idea was that sort of two, you know, two nights of culture crawl, exploring culture um, across Newcastle and Gateshead would have been a great way to really kickstart um, you know, such a such diverse programme of, of events from today, Inspiration Day, all the way through to Friday. But we took it virtual. We went, we went online and uh, shared some of the pictures and memories from years, years by, gone by. Since 2007, we made a podcast, sorry, a playlist on Spotify. So you could, you could shimmy at home and also partnered up with our partner, uh, Lux Magazine, to create a cocktail that you can make and, uh, at home. So sip in style, shimmy at home, and then share some of the stories um, from late shows gone by. This one, well, these two uh, were two of my favourites that were shared on, on the Friday night. And uh, I just love the woman in, in blue having, having a great time at a silent, silent disco. There were a number of silent discos last year, but I think this one was from uh, Baltic in 2014. I might be wrong, but I'm sure I'll be told. But um, so just, just to sort of wrap things up, we may be closed and there might be some very significant challenges ahead for, for our sector. But I would just say we are resilient, we are adaptable and we're, we are creative in our models. So stand by and, and see what happens. But I would also urge you if, you, if you do have a favorite museum, gallery, heritage site um, that, that you love, that you miss, um, please do consider supporting, supporting them because really the, the, the need is real and it won't go away anytime soon. And we'll love to see you when we are open again. But thank you very much. And hopefully that's just a, a little bit of an insight into what we've been up to over the last nine weeks. There's a lot more uh, information happening. The world's changing very quickly so I can't really give anything else um, any more detail in terms of when we are planning to reopen but please do keep uh, keep in touch and uh, and follow us on Twitter let me know if there's anything else I can offer or uh, if you want to find out more just let me know but thanks very much and look forward to hearing from the other speakers for the rest of the day thanks <laughs>